Hi, woodshop friends. Cindy here, and welcome to My Little Woodshop. Before we start, I just want to remind you that any of the unfinished wood pieces that you see in my videos can all be found in either my Etsy, eBay, or Amazon shop under the shop name of My Little Woodshop 2. And note the two on the end. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the way in which I prepare my wood for painting. There are various other ways, but this is what I like to do. So these are two pieces of wood. One has been prepped with gesso. It's got a really, really, really rough finish on it because when you paint the wood, the grain of the wood gets raised and you get that really, really, really rough feel to it. So lightly sanding it, very lightly sanding it, is going to quickly turn that rough piece of wood into something very, very nice to paint on. I use this little sanding block. I have various other sanding tools that I own and, and use, but this particular one I really like. I um, purchased it at Lowe's. It, it has this little bolt on it. You take the bolt off and then you can lift the top piece off and replace it with whatever grit of sandpaper that you are wanting to use. Uh, in this particular case, for most of the painting and the sanding that I do, I use a very, very, very fine piece of wood. I'm sorry, of sandpaper. And then you place that sandpaper back on, put the top on it, and screw the, the bolt in. I mentioned this in a previous video that I did. I, I found this at Lowe's, and when I went back to purchase a few more, I couldn't find them. And I eventually did locate them in the scraping aisle where the scraping and the putty knives are. These are not with the sanding tools, or at least not at my Lowe's. But I do, I love this this tool. I just, I really love it. It's easy to hold and, and easy to work with. And uh, again, really, really like it. <clears throat> so what I do is I, I put the gesso on the piece and then I lay it in my hand and I just lightly sand it and it gives it that nice soft baby bottom feel. I don't worry about sanding the sides. What I do like about the gesso, the white acrylic gesso, is it covers up those burnt edges or any burnt pieces that you can see. So painting with dark paint isn't too bad, but when you use a lighter paint, it's it's difficult. So now we're going to go into, I kind of jumped ahead of myself a little bit there. Now we're going to go into, um, I'm going to demonstrate for you how I paint those pieces. So I like to use this ceramic tile. I purchased it at Lowe's. I mean, they have just a wide variety of sizes. I believe this piece is about five by seven. And of course I have my water and I always make sure to have a rag. I also, um, and, and then here's the uh, liquid acrylic gesso that I use. And it's Liquitex is the brand that I use. And if you make sure to get the acrylic, it, it is white. I've purchased other gesso, just basic gesso, and it's clear and it doesn't cover those burnt uh, imperfections, let's say, like the acrylic gesso does. So I've squirted a little bit out onto my tile, dip just a little, uh, my uh, brush in just a little bit of water, and then I always pull the gesso out, kind of wetting it down a little bit. If you get your gesso on there too thick, you're going to get ridges and, and you'll really have to sand to get that off. So, and I do this with my acrylic painting too, and I'll, I'll be demonstrating that at some point as well. But anyway, so I pull it out, I get my brush all loaded. You can see my brush has <laughs> seen its better days, but <clears throat> for the purpose of what I'm using this brush for, um, this, it, it works perfect. I don't do a whole lot of decorative painting anymore. So uh, the brushes that I do have, I, I save for that purpose. But some of my older brushes I use for uh, painting with uh, painting the gesso on. So again, pulling out the gesso and covering the piece. I only put one coat on. I don't uh, go back and put another coat on. But 
I will tell you this gesso I I allow about four to six hours for the gesso to dry it does not dry as quickly as acrylic paint does so you can see I'm kind of working it out there so I don't get the uh, um, I guess the ridges or, or whatever on the edges and um, make sure to you know cover that sides too where you get the darkened pieces one hint that I I love this hint this is a curtain rod uh, holder or a curtain holder I guess or even I guess you could use it for drapes also but I um, will paint half of my piece on both sides and then I will attach this drapery curtain holder whatever you want to call it and I will then finish painting on the other side again since gesso takes so long to dry I like to get it all painted at one time and by having this little hook on it I hold on to the hook like that and let me yeah move that out of the way so you can see it a little bit better and continue to paint and as you can see I'm able to cover the entire piece by using this drapery holder and once I'm completely done with painting the whole piece I have a little like a, uh, a pole or a rod or whatever you want to call it that I use and I will hang my wet pieces on this this rod and the, it, it let it sit for the four to six hours that it takes to dry and when I come back then it's it's all ready to be sanded like I showed you earlier and uh, ready to paint on so that wraps that video up for today and thank you Thank you so much for watching my videos, and if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel for hauls, craft ideas, and projects using my unfinished wood. If you don't like what you saw, send me an email at mylittlewoodshop at msn.com and tell me how I can improve on my videos. I'm very new to doing these videos, and any feedback that you can provide me I is greatly appreciated. Thank you.